It was in my 27th year that I first came upon the house, hiking along the Alder Creek Forest. The locals told me there was an old abandoned village deep in the woods, in a village whose prosperous years ended some hundred years ago, when Shanico became the leading wool producer of the area. As a result, no one needed the wool from the town of Alder. Same thing happened to Shanico a few years later, when people found wool cheaper elsewhere. I'm now 39. I hope I'm in desperate need of what I might find out there because my wife has become ill. Only for her would I ever think of venturing in those woods again. Only the love I have for her. I'm scared. I'm trembling even as I write this, but I must get this over with as the night is passing quickly and soon. It shall be time to go. It was a bright sunny day when I entered the woods. I was feeling quite optimistic about my journey. I was using a map I found in an old book called The Ghost Towns of the Northwest. I mentioned the town of Alder, but I never actually found Alder. I got lost and got way off track, miles and miles away from any known civilization. It was getting near full dark when I came across something peculiar. All the way out here, deep in the woods, where no man would need to wander, I came across a freshly carved jack-o'-lantern. It was a deformed jack-o'-lantern, which was taller than it was round, much like a human head but larger. It was oddly shaped and more bulbous on the left than the right which makes its single-tooth smile look like your grotesque, rotten mouth of an elderly man who suffered a stroke. Inside, I could see something shining. My curiosity got the best of me, and I bent down for a closer examination. The first thing I noticed was how the eyes were shaped, unlike any eyes I'd ever seen carved into a pumpkin. Each spot where an eye would be was made of four holes, giving the pumpkin a, the appearance of having eight eyes. After examining the mouth and then the eyes, I looked at the nose with more focus. Then I noticed a movement behind the nose. The spiders quickly ran up my arm. I ripped off my coat and threw it as far as I could, and then started wiping off the remaining spiders from my arm. Then I stopped. I'm stunned. To see that the top was being raised from the base. The next spider. The girth similar to that of baseball bat, covered in orange slime and pasty seeds that it squeezed out of the pumpkin. Oh, so big. The spider spun and looked right at me. I must have run two miles before I finally felt safe enough to stop, but only long enough to catch my breath. I headed in the direction I'd come from, and as soon as I could, I started running again. After a short while, I came across a camper sign. The sign told me that after three more hours of hiking, I would be back to where I entered the woods. I'd only walked maybe a hundred feet more when the fog rolled in all around me. I'd be a fool to try to find my way back through the fog, so I gave up on trying to make it out of the woods that night. I would wait until morning, then walk out of the woods and try to forget the mention of the giant spider. I set up my small tent and climbed inside, right before I went to sleep. I remember thinking, God, please don't let that spider find its way to me. I woke up in the middle of the night when I heard a sound much like a door being slammed. Was I close to a road? Was I so lost that I'm nearly out of the woods? I put my tent back in my pack and headed towards the noise. Luckily, the fog had lifted, at least for the moment. I had started to think that maybe it was all in my head until I saw a light in the distance, an orange light and then I could smell a fire. The woods were on fire, they must have been. I'm way too far out in isolation for someone else to be out here, but of course that was a horrible pumpkin someone had carved. I walked slowly in the direction of the fire. Step by step, I listened. 
until I got outside of the clearing and the blaze of the fire. The fire drew my attention for a while. Its heat felt good on my coatless upper body. As I stood there warming my hands, I noticed rather queer things around. There was a chair made from a log with back support made from twigs nailed to the log. Behind the big flames of this bonfire, I could see a house. Perhaps a house is missing their finer details. I walked around the tree line to get a better view of the house. It was very old, architecture like I'd never seen before. The roof was completely flat, and the house had more windows than walls, windows that give away the age of the building. Some of the cracks in the windows were filled with dirt. The place gave me the creeps, and a feeling of dread swept over me. I was ready to leave the place when I saw more jack-o'-lanterns. I shuddered at the thought of the spiders they might contain. Instead of running, I found myself approaching the house, thinking that the occupant could help me find my way out of the woods, or at least provide a shelter for the night where I wouldn't have to worry about such a twisted environment. Before knocking, I decided to peek through the window. Inside was nicer than I would have imagined. It had old furnishing, but not as weathered as outside of the house. An antique collector would be ecstatic to come across such a find. There was a beautiful old couch and chairs both covered in velvet, with detailed carvings in the wood and what looked like a solid oak table inside. But what really drew me in was an old trunk. It was covered in a pale leather that resembled the color of skin. It wasn't made with the same craftsmanship as the other furnishing. The seams were tacky and went all over the place. I was about to walk to the door when I see the inhabitant enter the room. The man looked as old as the leather, with skin that looked just as leathery. He had unkempt hair and an even longer beard. The right side of his face was sloped, just like the pumpkin. He walked over, opened the trunk, and inside, it was full of gold and silver coins. I just stood there, awestruck, until he turned to me and smiled, revealing one tooth and eight eyes. I've never been so scared in my life. A moment later, two extra arms and two legs sprung out of his body tearing apart his fake skin and revealing him to be another ugly black spider. I ran, I ran fast enough to win the Olympic medal. When I finally got out of the woods, I was miles from my car. I never went back to that car, never went back to those woods again. I hitchhiked out of there and spent the next year drinking, trying to get that image out of my head. I know that bigger men would have gone back for all that gold. Update. 10-20-1999 now my wife is sick, and the operation is more than I can afford. This is my only chance. I value her life more than my own.